today we're going to take a look at a brand new product that is from Hattons, and that's this line of coaches that they have produced over the last, oh, three years. And it has taken three years for them to get them out. So I've got five of them here, so we're going to do a uh, sort of an unboxing. I don't usually do unboxing videos, but we'll, we'll take a look at these, and then we'll get them out, get them out on the track, see how they run, see how they perform. So let's go ahead and get started. So what are these? Well, basically they are examples of passenger coaches that were used in the UK during the late 1800s and early 1900s. So they have very, very fancy paint schemes before they simplified them a lot and lost a lot of that special uh, uniqueness about them because they are very nicely decorated. So let's start pulling some of these out and take a look at them. Now, these are not true to prototype, okay? They are a generic type of car that might represent something that was run on the prototype railroad of that era. So they, 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 they generally do come close to prototype, and particularly in the paint schemes, but, you know, they probably are not going to match anything that ran on a given prototype railroad uh, for that era, because they are just a generic type of car. But they do give you a very, very good way of building um, a rolling stock fleet that is representative of the late 1800s, early 1900s, which generally has not been readily available. And, and uh, Hattons did this because it allows them to use the same sets of cars and car bodies and just apply different paint schemes for numerous railroads that existed during that era. And that was all before the big uh, consolidation that they did in the, uh, I believe it was 1923, um, when they combined all of the various small railroads into four major railroads. And those would be the Great Western, the Southern, the LNER, and the LMS. So let's go ahead and I'll start popping these out and we'll take a look at them. Then we'll put them on the track and see how they run. Or we'll see how they track anyway. Okay, let me pull this one out here. Uh, they're very nicely packaged for shipment. Hmm. So they come out, they've, they've got this plastic packaging that's very similar to what's used on just about all locomotive and, and uh, passenger car and other rolling stock uh, models that come out of China these days. And they were produced in China for Hattons. So this is a, um, a what's called a brake van, and it basically uh, provided a place for a brakeman, or a guard as they were called, to sit in here. And you can see there's a little bump out right here with a little window on each side. So he could look out uh, along the length of the train and keep track of what was going on. And he had access to brake equipment in the car itself that he could apply. So you would have these typically at the ends of the uh, consist so that they could apply brakes as needed. So let me pull this out and we'll take a look. Just lift it out like this. And you can see it is beautifully decorated, beautifully done with all of this very fine printing in here, just totally exquisite. I've zoomed in a lot closer for you, so hopefully you'll be able to pick out some of the details that aren't quite as visible from uh, normal viewing angles. Let me go ahead and move in even further because there's a lot of very fine lines here that I, uh, I'm not sure that you can see at this resolution. So let me bring it in as close as I can get it and still keep it in focus. And you can see the very fine double line here, the red lining around the windows, uh, the very small numbers uh, that they've managed to print and get them here legibly. I get this little number right here that you can still see. It truly is amazing. The logo here, the herald uh, for the Great Western Railway. Beautiful detail. The underside is fully detailed, as you can see here, and they produce these in both a sixth wheel and a four wheel version. So you can get uh, both of those. Now, 
because they wanted these to be able to operate on even the smallest uh, model railroad curves, or the sharpest curves anyway, the center set of wheels here is set on this sliding mechanism. So it can move as the car goes around a curve or through a turnout, whatever is necessary, without derailing. I checked all of the wheel sets uh, before this, to be honest with you, and uh, they are perfectly set as far as the NMRA spacing guide goes. So they'll track well on any HO00 scale track, it's the same as far as that goes. Uh, I will tell you one thing though, that in some cases uh, I did have uh, trouble going through some uh, turnout frogs. And the reason for that was they have metal wheels here for the pick, for power pickup and a plastic center so that that insulates between the two wheels so you don't get shorts. But they are not completely pressed, the inside of the wheel is not completely pressed tight against that plastic divider. And in some cases, if the wheel is reversed so that you've got a little bit of space on these on one side, that little bit of space needs to be all on the same side of the, of the car. Otherwise, they will tend to uh, have trouble going through uh, frogs. And I'll tell you that now. I, I had one that kept uh, jumping track or bouncing every time it went through a frog. I simply took the wheel out and reversed it. No problems at all after that. So that's one tip I picked up on. Now another thing that comes with these are these extra set of running boards here. So they come with running boards already installed. And also I'll point out that all of these have the prototypically accurate type of lighting. So in some cases they had electric lights, in some cases they had gas lights, some I believe oil lights. So it, it all depends on what the prototype was using and they have different types of appliances here on the roof uh, for those lanterns or lights internally. So that's another nice little feature. Uh, another thing here, you can see the details on the end. The coupling hook here is, is detailed and it even has a small bit of chain, although it's non-functional. Um, I was kind of surprised though that Hattons did not provide any kind of close coupling uh, fixture like the ones that are provided by Hornby so that you could close couple these cars. And here on the other end, nice details, the steps so that they could get up to the roof to fill the oil reservoirs on or the kerosene, whatever they were using for the uh, oil lamps. These are wire hand grabs here, beautifully done. The buffers are not sprung. Uh, so you do have to be careful when you're coupling these and not get them too close coupled if you're using alternate types of coupling mechanisms because that they will not give as you go around a curve if they bump and then you could have derails. So be aware of that. Other than that, that's about it. So that's the full brake uh, six wheel uh, guard coach or brake coach uh, from Hatton. So let me go ahead and we'll put this on the track and get ready for another one. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. This one here is a four-wheel uh, brake third. So let me pull this one out, and we'll set, the, uh, we'll set that extra running board aside. Very nicely packaged and protected with this plastic wrap. So this particular uh, coach, it has the little bump out here at the rear for the brakeman to get in there and the guard. And you can see it says right here on the door, guard, so that he'll know which door to go in, as well as uh, three third class compartments built into this particular type of coach. And the details are all the same for these uh, four-wheel coaches. So you only had four wheels on these. They're a slightly shorter type. And you can see I've already put a KD coupler on this one. But again, they're all pretty much the same as far as the details on the ends and uh, the lettering and details. Look at this very, very fine. I hope you can see that. Uh, very, very fine printing here, these lines. Everything is so well done, it's amazing. Uh, I've done these, I've built the Peacock versions of these, and let me tell you, 
it's well worth the money to buy these. I mean, because painting these can be very, very difficult. Okay, I'm going to put this one up. They have fairly nicely detailed instructions that tell you how to remove the roof and how to install an 18-pin decoder because these uh, ones that I got came with lights, or the four that I got in the package came with lights. And you can install a 18-pin decoder in here uh, just to turn the lights on and off. I don't think I'm going to be doing that. That's a pretty expensive option to add unless somebody comes up with a function-only decoder with an 18-pin socket uh, to make it more inexpensive. And then they also tell you how you can remove the center wheel sets on those uh, six-wheel cars. But it's not much to it. Also, let me point out, they say here for more information, visit uh, hattons.co.uk Genesis Instructions. I tried that and there is no such site apparently. Uh, I guess they haven't gotten around to creating it or they did this instruction sheet up and then changed their minds. I've got an email in to them. Hopefully I'll hear back and they'll let me know what was going on with that. So that's the four-wheel brake third. Now let's pull out four-wheel coach. Okay, and it is an all third class coach. So let me pull that out. And again, all of these come with this extra pair of uh, running boards. So here we are, what this is, there are five third class compartments here built in. And that's all it is, it's a third class coach. Very nicely detailed, each, the ends are the same on all of these as you can see. Again, no sprung buffers. And the bottom here has all the full details, running gear, brake gear, everything that you need. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And this one is a sixth wheel, first, second, and third class coach. So let me pull that out and we'll take a look at it. So basically what we have here is a first, second, and a third, first, second, and third. So a combination of first, second, and third class coach accommodations on this one. And as I said, it's another one of the six wheel coaches with the sliding center axle. Everything the same on the ends though. I'm not even gonna try to take the roof off because uh, I'm afraid that once the little clips get broken, um, you're not gonna get it to stay on without glue. So I don't wanna have to do that. So that is the uh, first, second, and third class uh, coach. Okay, now finally we have a six-wheel brake third. So that's going to be a six-wheel coach with third-class compartments as well as the brake and luggage compartment. So again, the sliding center axle for that sixth one and the compartment for the guard here with the little bump out as well as a luggage compartment uh, here and then three third-class compartments. And again, I've already attached a uh, number 18 KD coupler here, uh, installed it in the uh, Neem coupler pocket. Beautiful little cars. Okay, I'm gonna put this up on the uh, track and then we'll take a look at it. I've set up the train with the Oxford Rail Dean's Goods locomotive uh, in the lead. Uh, it's about the oldest prototype that I have as far as that goes. Most of my locomotives are decorated in the paint scheme from the 1930s and 40s. Let me go ahead and start pulling forward and we'll take a look at uh, these cars. Okay, right off you can see there's our four-wheel uh, brake third and the lights are on in there. I'm very, I was very impressed with the, uh, the lighting on these because it is very bright and also very constant. Even though it doesn't have apparently a constant lighting circuit, the lights don't flicker at all as they move along the track unless you come to a really dir dirty spot or a, a dead spot, something like that. And the second one in line is our uh, four-wheel coach. So that's the all-third coach and it's lit. Now we'll bring up the all-brake six-wheel, and you can see there are no lights in this one. I bought this without lights so that I could do a video on how to install lights in these cars for anyone who has chosen not to buy the lighting option. 
Okay, we'll move forward. And next is the uh, six wheel coach, the one, two, three. And again, that one is lit. All of the uh, ones that came as part of this four car set or four coach set have lights in them. So you can clearly see the difference between the lights here uh, in the six wheel coach and the six wheel all brake coach. Very, very distinctive lighting effect that they've managed to pull off. Okay, let's go ahead and, and we'll bring up the six wheel brake third, bringing up the rear on the train. So we have a nice five coach train uh, being pulled by our Oxford Rail uh, 060. Let me run this by you again and you can see that there is no flicker at all in the lighting. I think that they've done a great job with the power pickup on these. Okay, let's go ahead and do a run by and take a look at them. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. You know, I've always been enthralled by UK prototypes and UK uh, railroads and model railroading. And I've, uh, over the last three or four years, have kind of indulged myself in doing a little bit of it as well. So if you are interested in UK prototypes and UK modeling, stick around for more videos in the future. Hopefully there'll be enough interest in this. Bye now.